Okay. So does everybody have some sort of a Unix thing? Okay, because you're all quiet, I can't tell. <laughs> um, virtual box or um, Ubuntu. If you have one of, one of those, that's great. Uh, for Windows people, the easiest way to install Ubuntu is to go to Microsoft Store and install Ubuntu. It's like an app that you can download. And um, so, um, that's the best way, and um, so uh, it's an app. It's a free app, so you just download and install. That's it. And for Unix people, now you can install VirtualBox with the instruction that I shared. And if you have any questions, let me know. We're gonna record today's video. We're recording right now. And we're going to make it available later to you. Uh, you can watch it again. And if you have any questions, um, you can ask me. My goal is to go through the foundations of Unix today. We might have a few sessions uh, just to talk about Unix, because I feel like in many of the courses, uh, bioinformatics courses, these things are kind of rushed through because they have to cover a lot of things in a very short time and some of the very important functions are uh, forgotten over time and people end up having trouble. So my goal is to uh, make the, the course, uh, design the course material in a way that is accessible to anyone without any prior coding experience. Uh, obviously, some of you guys have had uh, bioinformatics training, and some of you are currently having bioinformatics training, and hopefully this will be complementary. I'm checking the syllabus for VTI bioinformatics, and I'm trying to hopefully make this complementary to that. So anybody, any comments or questions before we get started? All good? Great. So um, I'll put the link to the material in the chat. Uh, you probably have seen it already, but I'll share it again. So this is not going to be in a lecture format. This is going to be hopefully very interactive. Um, I'm going to just go through each command that we work on. I'll give you some introduction about what it does. Then we'll actually do it uh, together and see um, um, if anyone has any questions or problems we'll resolve, then move to the next. Does that sound good? OK. So share screen. The material for this course uh, has been provided by Rutgers, oh, sorry, Duke University. Uh, these are some really awesome instructions that I've used for my own learning in the past, and I found it very useful. Uh, probably the most useful material on Unix out there. And I like the fact that they uh, start from very, very, very basic uh, commands. So um, Unix is a compu computer language. Uh, Mac operating system is uh, very similar to Unix. So uh, on all of the Mac computers, there is something called a terminal. And it looks like this, this little thing. So if you go to Launchpad and search up here's uh, terminal, then you'll find it. Um, the Zoom thing is getting in the way, so it doesn't let me search. But uh, 
if you click on it, you'll see this command uh, app uh, application that you can type commands in. Um, and this is basically your way of interacting with your files on your computer without clicking. So before <clears throat> mouse, computer mouse was invented, everything was done by typing commands. And um, so this was the interface. And in Windows, the language, the computer language that is equivalent to Unix is called DOS, D-O-S. And those were all the, basically the ancestors of uh, operating systems. And then people invented mouses and we started clicking on things uh, and we had graphic, graphic user interfaces. And then a lot of us stopped using commands. But uh, these things still exist because some people prefer using them and uh, it's easier if you're trying to develop a software or write a computer program. Uh, that's why they're still here. Uh, so on Mac, it's called terminal. Uh, on Windows, it's called the command prompt. But because one is based on Unix and one is based on DOS, uh, they're quite different. So I'm going to focus on Unix because uh, most of the bioinformatics is done on Unix. So, um, and there is a very interesting structure, uh, not, very st not very interesting probably for you, but it's very similar to what you would see on any computer. So you have the base, or the root of your operating system. And then there are these folders and uh, your files are going to be in these folders. And then um, inside each folder, you might have other folders or subfolders and so on. So it, it could be multiple levels as you know on any operating system. And here it's showing all the folders, but uh, you can assume that each folder has a lot of files in them. So some of the uh, introductory lessons of Unix is based on creating a folder, putting files there, uh, copying files, moving files, deleting files, uh, and renaming them. Um, and in Unix, they call these folders directories. Uh, so it's synonymous, directory or folder. So, if you're all ready, we can get started by just uh, learning by doing and start just typing. So you can make yourself a directory. You can, I'm gonna just ignore me for a second. So you can make a directory called uh, coding. Uh, can you all see what I'm typing down here? I'll probably move this a little bit. So make it easier for people to see. So make directory coding and it's MKDIR coding. And if you type that and hit enter, looks like nothing happened. Usually that's a good sign because if there's an error, it will complain and tell you that there was an error or you did something wrong. But when there is nothing, that's, that means everything is good. And if I um, type ls, which is short for list, I'm gonna see a directory called coding. Does it work for everybody? All good? Yeah, all good. All good. Awesome. Uh, if anyone has trouble, they should let me know. Sorry, I don't. Okay. Uh, because I want to make sure that everyone can follow. Okay. All right. And I don't see everybody, so. I might miss it, so if you need to uh, speak, just unmute yourself. 
So how is, where where yeah. the directory coding um, be in in the system? So wherever you wish, when you start it, uh, you can just type nk directory nk dir coding, and that will be exactly where you are. So if you're in the root, the coding will be there. So right right now, I am inside. So my current directory has a lot of other stuff. This is what's called home directory, and I'm going to get into that hopefully soon. Uh, there are other stuff, but when I typed MK directory coding, it created a directory for me that looks like that. So it's basically a new folder. Runlog, did that answer your question? Oh, is a is the folder the coding folder um, appear in the finder? Um, so, yeah, actually, so you have a Mac. I think you can use the the terminal. So I'll stop sharing, and you can find the terminal, and it'll help you. You can you can share your screen. Oh, I can't. I can't share it. I don't have it. Why? Because uh, it says. Oh, sorry, sorry. Disable. Okay, because we logged out and came back in. Okay, go ahead. So yeah, I, I make this directory. So my question is now, like. Uh huh. Can uh, I can I have, locate? Yeah, I see. You know, yeah, can you I see. locate it somewhere in the in my Mac? Because right. it's a yeah. This um uh, yeah, it's gonna be somewhere in, on your Mac. It's gonna be a folder, but for now we're gonna focus on just commands and kind of ignore the graphic user interface because a lot of what you're gonna do as a bioinformatician, if you become that, is gonna be just commands and you're, you're gonna forget how to click basically. So, okay. um, but but I see the folder. It says coding right there. Do you see it? Oh, sorry. Stop. Yeah, I see it. I just okay. wonder where it is. It's, okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Shish. So what we just did, we created a folder. And if we type ls, which means list, it will list all the files and directories for the uh, address or location that we're in. Um, ls a um, lists everything. So you know that sometimes some files are hidden files on your system. So if you want to see all of them, then uh, you just type ls a. So I can go to coding cd. Uh, is short for change directory. So CD coding means change directory to coding. And when you type that and hit enter, now you're going to be in a separate directory or a new directory that has coding in its name. And if I type ls, nothing seems to happen right now because this is a new folder or directory that I just created and there's nothing in it. So it's an empty directory. And ls-a is listing everything if there's a hidden file and still I don't see anything. So that's good. Um, we can try making another directory by copying and pasting this command or you can just type mkdir space Unix stuff. So this will make a new directory. So not that. Make directory Unix stuff. And 
if I type ls now, it shows in a new directory. Um, then it says you can go inside that uh, directory. Um, CD Unix stuff and we're dash. So we're inside Unix stuff now. <clears throat> and um, ls a like I said, it just lists everything, including hidden file. Uh, dot in Unix language means uh, where you are currently. So the folder that you're in. So if you type cd dot, uh, it's kind of meaningless because that says change directory to current directory. That means stay where you are. So if you type that, looks like nothing happened. You're still in the same directory called Unix stuff. So, uh, but you know, you should know the meaning of this because it's gonna be useful because this means current directory. Uh, dot dot on the other hand means parent directory. So if you type cd dot dot like that, or cd space dot dot, that says go one folder up. So basically you're telling the program to go upstairs one level above where you are. So when I type that and hit enter, it takes me back to coding. So I was inside Unix stuff. Then I went to the upper level to code, okay? And PWD is short for print working directory. Uh, if I type that, it will show the address of where I am. This is my account and this is the folder. If I go into Unix stuff, and type print working directory pwd. I'm gonna see the address changing, which includes the Unix stuff in it. So every place on your computer has an address and every file. And the address is written based on uh, the location of your file, what directories and subdirectories you have to go through to find that specific folder. So this one Unix stuff is under coding, which is under my account in my home directory. Does that make sense for everybody? Are you all able to uh, run the commands as I type? All good? Becca? Good, good, okay, great. So there's an exercise for you. Um, it says using the commands cd, ls, and pwd, uh, try to explore the system. Uh, you can use cd dot dot to go one level up, uh, or you can type cd name of a directory and go inside it. You can use ls to list the uh, List uh, what's inside each uh, directory and PWD to just check the address of where you are. I'm gonna turn on the AC, it's getting hot here. Okay, I'll give you all five minutes to do that. So the next topic is forcing the operating system to give you an error. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. But if you type something like LS backups and hit enter, it's gonna give you an error. And the error says cannot access backups, no such file or directory. And 
if I got a penny for every time I got this area, I'll be a, mil I'd be a millionaire by now. Uh, so you're going to encounter this area a lot. That uh, when that happens, that means either the file or folder that you're trying to reach is not here, it's somewhere else, or there's a typo in the command. Like when you type the name of it, you maybe misspelled it. In this case, it's clear that there's no folder called backups because I didn't create it. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is your home directory. So in uh, Unix, if you type CD, this thing, more or less, approximately, what is it called? In English, uh, I forgot. Uh, tilde. Uh, can you type it in the chat? Tilde. tilde. Okay, so I, I don't see the chat, but whatever Paul said. <laughs> uh, so that means home. That's like the root location for where you have access. And that's different on different systems. Uh, the, on your computer, that could be the location where you started working from, uh, or the location where uh, the operating system automatically reserved for you for doing things. Uh, on a cluster or uh, a remote server, which you might use in the future, the home directory is where uh, the server managers gave you some space to work with. So they assign some space for you and they call that your home directory. And every time you type, type CD space tilde, uh, it takes you to your home directory. And if you type PWD, uh, it says home slash HR355, that's my user account. So that's my home account. Uh, that's going to be useful to know. So next session, next section is uh, to learn how to copy things. So. Before we learn how to copy things, we should go back to where we, where we were. We go back to coding, CD coding, and we type ls, there's Unix stuff there. Um, and you can go inside that. Unix stuff. Okay. So now let's learn how to create a file. There are multiple ways to create a file in Linux. Uh, one is called nano, which I like. It's the easiest that I've found. If you type nano uh, one. Oh, uh, Hamid, Alice, yes. is a bit, Alice is a bit stuck. Okay, I'll pause. Okay, go ahead. Oh, her microphone isn't working, but she typed some things in the chat. Okay. Uh, can, uh, okay. What's the question? I did something else. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing. At least you can share and see if I can help you. All good. All set. Great.
All right, so we're going to create the text file. Uh, we can just type nano and hit enter. It should give you some empty space to type stuff in. What we're trying to do here is to create a text file. Normally, you would do that on your operating system by clicking or right clicking and giving it a name and saving. But here, you're going to create a text file by just typing commands. Does this work for everybody? Give me a thumb, thumb up. If it uh, works for you. I mean, do you mind going a few steps back? I think I missed it. Okay. Which, which step? Uh, creating the file. Text file? Yeah. Okay. 